I feel quite rugged, actually, because I've got my beard, I've got my woolly hat. And I've never owned a pair of these shoes before. I'm not a fan of mud. I've asked David Williams to meet me at this remote dam, right in the heart of Devon. David is a man who loves a big challenge. So his first light, early start, and I'm going to do my best to deliver. See, it's difficult to think where he's going to come from. He's not going to jump out of the bushes or something <laughs> naked. But it's the sort of thing he'd do. Army hijinks. Everyone's naked and smacking each other's bottoms or something. <laughs> We're going to such a wild and spectacular part of the UK. But it is cold. The weather forecast is horrendous. Uh, David's texted me about 100 times already, so he's nervous. But there's no doubt this one is going to be an adventure. I think Bear is in Bear's world. He thinks we secretly would like to be like him and live like him, but we actually don't. He'll want to push me today. But he's probably going to make me eat something disgusting. I mean, there's no real need to eat a sheep's testicle in this day and age. But I have a feeling he's going to pop one in my mouth at some point. Oh, dear. I think it's going to be difficult today because you've got two alpha males, two very butch guys together. Things are going to kick off. Here he comes. Oh, my word, this is noisy. He's driving a bit too far to show off. Hey! <laughs> How are you? The great man. How lovely to see you. <laughs> what are the chances of meeting here on this nice bridge over reservoir? Oh, so, I'm not good at reading maps, I've got to be honest with got you. Got the map? Yeah, I'm not good at reading maps. Well, you're, you're the navigator. Have you not got a sat nav? Hang on, I've got a belly bit in yeah, my rucksack. <laughs> I've got to take my rucksack off. <laughs> OK. Yeah. Oh, uh, right, let's get rid of that. Sweet Lord, yeah, give me strength today. This is it. Here we go. Right, OK. So we're here. We're here. And you... So we're, going, we're going about down here. So you've got to come so out. just go there. Yeah. Well, the reservoir's this way, so you're going to bear right, right? Let's just wing it. I'm going to put the map out. Whoa! Nutcase! Oh, my God. <laughs> oh! oh. oh. You're in great time. David Wallium studied every aspect of comedy and was destined to perform. <laughs> After years of honing his comic skills came Little Britain with Matt Lucas. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, my name is Emily, Emily Howard, and I'm a lady. And David never looked back. Hello again. <laughs> David is now one of the UK's most popular children's authors, and as a long-distance swimmer, he's raised millions for charity. A huge London Palladium welcome. They are David Williams, Alicia Dixon, Amanda Hall, and Simon Cowell. Judging on Britain's Got Talent, he's become Simon Cowell's much-loved foil. Is it yes for me? And now I'm taking him into the wilds of Devon to discover what David Williams is really made of. This is so cool. I've never actually driven off-road before. Whoa! <laughs> actually, I am happy with you driving. Love it. Wow. Have a sip of tea before we're out into the elements. How are this tea? <laughs> it's kind of the... I spilled the tea. <laughs> that's, that's our only supply. <laughs> hang on, hang on. It's gone over the map. Uh, ah. Yeah, watching out for the rocks. <laughs> We're on full brakes, so better stop. 
Wow, what a view from up here. That's incredible. You ready? Well, hang on. Just look, I've got to get me rucksack back on. <laughs> Where are we now? We're up here. OK, go on, we've got to begin. I, I, I am actually ready. I, I was actually waiting for you a long time. It was like waiting for Simon Cowell. You did yes. hours. What do I do with this? To get in your pocket. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. Let's do it. motivation for wanting to do this i like a challenge if you're only ever in your comfort zone yeah then you never really find out anything about yourself do you were you outdoorsy as a kid not massively i like being in my room on my own like listening to comedy records people already have to run to keep up with you don't they you're one of those people <laughs> how would simon cow do on this journey do you think very hard because the high heel shoes are the murder on this. <laughs> but you're always so brilliant with it. You, you always seem to have just the confidence to basically take the mic. We're like brothers, really. Brothers who have sort of a love-hate relationship. Yeah. He once said to me, "You're only happy when I'm unhappy, and I'm only happy when you're unhappy." <laughs> he is very competitive, but he's he can be good fun to be around as well, and he's got quite a naughty sense of humour. Yeah. I just wish he'd get out of bed earlier. Yeah. <laughs> I love that he's always late. Well, because if someone always tells late. me to be somewhere at a certain time, I'm there. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I don't think I'll just arrive five hours late. <laughs> <laughs> this way. OK, really careful near this edge, because that really is now a long way down. Oh, wow. This is where we're going to be really careful, because this is a good 200 foot down. I'm not good with heights. That is a really long way down. For our first big challenge, we'll need to drop down a crumbling rock face, then cross a freezing cold lake. Around the back of that tree, yeah. I've cased something that's going to help us. Go and just grab that for me. What is this? Life raft. One of those ones when it hits water, it auto inflates. Yeah. What well, we are going down there. So what we're going to do is throw the raft first of all. Mm. It's going to hit the water. It's going to inflate. It's going to be attached to the end of this. Can I throw the raft? You throw the raft. That, looks, that sounds like quite a fun thing to do. Yeah, that'd be good. Then I'm going to lower you on the black line, pull the raft to you, get in it, and then I'll abseil down into the raft with you, and off we go. That's the theory anyway. Do you want me to take this out of the bag? No, it stays in the bag. The bag opens itself? Yeah, a little. Oh, that's clever. Down here. So no. I'm tied on, am I? Uh, no, I'm just oh. holding you. Like OK, a, like so a toddler really... on reins. <laughs> just stop Is that where our relationship is heading? <laughs> so a big throw right out. You give me the count. 100. 99. <laughs> 98. Okay. One. Two. Three. That sound like it inflated? I can't see it from here. OK, well, it's on the overhang, so we're not going to see it until we're down. I think we've just got to have faith and trust that that's inflated. Yes. Good throw. Thank you. Thank you very much. Can I not the chopper down or something? OK, so let's put okay. this on here as well. This yeah, this will help <laughs> on that 100 metre drop. This is yeah, just... it'll be fine. When he had his helmet on, it would be fine. <laughs> this is just in case any falling rocks. OK, so... Hold on to the paddles. Hold on to the paddles. Low you down. Yes. Give me a shout for when you're like a metre or so above the water. Near the bottom. Were you, were you going to shout near the bottom? Near the bottom. OK, I'm listening for that. Then, the raft, hopefully, God willing, is inflated. Once you're in the raft... I'm in here. the bottom? Two bottoms. <laughs> OK, in the raft... In the raft, OK. Then what's next? And then... Then you're ready for me to come down, so... Near the bottom, in the raft, ready for you! Perfect. Anything perfect. else? No, that's absolutely sweet. So we're at the top of this cliff. You can see the lake underneath us. It's a lake that we need to get across. I've pre-stashed this little inflatable raft, thrown it off, and hopefully that... I threw it off. So then David I threw it threw off it magnificently. Off. Thank you. <laughs> and hopefully it's auto-inflated, then I'm going to lower David down. He's got some very clear commands that he's going to issue to me. But the main aim is stay out of the water. Winter 
freezing cold quarry lakes. Let's get this one right. Straight down there. Follow the green line down. All right, all right. Hopefully it will lead you to a nicely inflated raft. Okay. Well, I'd rather not look like that. <laughs> okay, it's horrible. Okay, we'll here we go, here we go. Ah. That's it, keep going, keep going. Oh. Keep waiting. Waiting. Here we go. Just like that, keep putting your weight on it. Ah. I've got, my, I've got my leg caught. I've got my leg caught in there. That's it. That's it. Brilliant. It's so dignified. There you go. Blimey. That's it. Okay. Over the edge, put a bit of weight onto it. Well, it's quite hard with these paddles. Yeah, I'd go on your knees maybe over this bit. Get down just over that lip. That's it, here we go. Inflate. Bear? Yep. The dinghy didn't inflate. What am I going to do? Coming up. Give it a yank. Things go from bad to worse. <laughs> You're going to be behind me, like this. And the wild gives us a chance to bond. You're so much solid muscle. Stop it, I'm you. I'm sure I'm going to be able to stop it, you. Inflate. I'm in the wilds of Devon on a mission with funny man David Williams. What am I going to do? We've launched an inflatable raft to get us across the water below. Pull the rope on the raft! But not everything is going to plan. I can't hear you, but the dinghy didn't inflate. Okay, you're going to have to deploy the life raft. Pull it manually. How do you inflate it? Pull the rope on the raft. Give it a pull. I can go down lower, then I can uh, try and inflate it. Down. Down a bit more. OK, I'm near the bottom. Our only way of avoiding the freezing water is if David can deploy the raft. My goodness. Yank the pin. <laughs> Give it a pull. Give it a yank. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, in the raft. Okay, ready for you. Okay, I'm coming. Watch out for any loose rocks. Yeah, yeah, I've seen them already. Here he comes. Epic. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did really well. Oh my god. Okay, we're paddling. We're going Where are we going? Over there. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, we're sinking. Yeah, there is there is air coming out of. <laughs> okay, paddle, paddle, paddle. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Big strokes, big strokes. Oh, is it? Yeah, I reckon we've got about two minutes. I think he wants to kill me off. He hates the idea of someone being more successful than him. Oh. So this is his plan. You go. Go. To kill me in an accident. Everything that could have gone wrong sort of went wrong there, didn't it? This thing definitely had a hole in it. But anyway, we've made it to a shore. We're still alive. We nearly went for a swim. And that would have been good, because I've got to rescue Bear. Oh, that was hard work. Sometimes in the wild, you have to improvise a little bit, but, you know, as I say, improvise, adapt, overcome, everything that could have gone wrong did. We made it, we are wet from gonna hear down, but these journeys are never easy. We're gonna keep going, keep pushing on, get warm again now. We're out of the wind, which is good. Yeah. But we're down right at the bottom of the valley. You can hear the river now. I've got a horrible feeling we're going to go into the river. Are you going to carry me? Because that would be quite romantic. I'll just get on your back, and off we go. Yeah. Quick refuel. Oh, my word. Weren't you the first person to raise a million pounds for common relief? For a sporting thing, probably, yeah. Because sport relief had just started. Yeah. The chief executive said, um, David, have you ever fancied doing anything sporty? And I said, well, quite fancy swimming the channel. He went, you can do it next year for sport relief. Mm. And I was like, oh, have I just agreed to that? Did you have any idea of quite how much work this was? No, I didn't really know how long it takes to swim it. It took me ten and a half hours. The thing that was hard was the cold, because it was about 15 degrees, so it's like sitting in a cold bath. And also, just, you know, doing front crawl for ten and a half hours is knackering. Do you stop at all? How you do you do Every it? half an hour, a whistle is blown, and you have to tread water. You can't hold on to anything. And then a, a little pole comes out with, like, a little gel or a bit of a banana or something like that. And you quickly eat something in about 20 seconds, and then you just do another half an hour swimming. And that, it just goes like that for ten and a half hours. It's amazing. But I do think when you're doing something for other people, it actually makes it easier because if it was just me, I could just go, well, I've had enough, I'm just going to give up. Yeah. But if people are depending on it, it's something different. And then you got, obviously, an OBE for... Was that a life moment? It was nice getting an OBE because I knew that my mum would be more excited and prouder than me. In fact, you get this letter, and I didn't tell my mum over the phone, so when I saw her, I said, oh, have a look at this letter. <laughs> she actually was speechless. Wow. It was so sweet to see, because it was yeah. like, you know, it really brought it home what a big thing it is. We're moving on. What's that for? It's going to help us get across this river. So let's just... Should I strip down to my pants? Uh, no, we're going to do this, all right? I'm going to be point man with the stick. Yes. You're going to be behind me holding on like, like this. Right. Nice and low. You're, you're bracing me. Don't be deceived by the pressure. A two foot of water is enough to take a car. Why don't we take our shoes off? Because... Then we won't get them wet. That is true, but sharp rocks... Piranhas, cut feet, sharks, and then and then you're hobbling for the rest of the day. So you hurt yourself, okay, and you got right. less stability and everything. But if but you had you to mean. carry me, say I just hurt my ankle or something, you would you be so able to carry me? You have so much solid muscle. It's be my. Stop it, I'm you. I'm not sure I'm going to be able. Stop <laughs> it, you. Yeah. You got my. Here we go. Woohoo! We're in. 
and we never cross our feet, we always shuffle them. Take our time. This is where the pressure builds here. Slippery rocks. Done like a pro. What an anchor man, DW. <laughs> Legendary, no problem. Wet feet. Oh, it's cold. Cold. How the feet? Cold. When are we having our picnic? I think we gotta gotta get some of these middle miles under our belt. And then we're gonna stop and eat. Okay. Get out of that wind. Gorse always saves the day. Quick slurp of that tea if there's any left. Thank you very much. So then what were you like as a teenager? Uh, well, I was very interested in being a comedian. I was in a school play when I was about 11 or 12. I was in an old boys' school. Yeah. And no one wanted to play the girls' parts. Mm. Apart from me! <laughs> and uh, Why, because we all... he knew that would get a laugh. And... Well, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I was just sort of drawn to dressing as a woman for some reason. I didn't really think about it, but I got some good laughs. Yeah. And it, it was such an exciting feeling. It was the first time in my life I'd ever felt any sort of power of some mm. kind. Mm. And so from that moment on, I was just obsessed with devouring all the comedy I possibly could. I met Matt Lucas in the National Youth Theatre. We did a radio series in Little Britain first on Radio 4. Then we did a TV series and immediately it just seemed to catch hold with people. And it became this big thing. Which is your favourite character? My favourite is probably... Carol Beer, who's the computer, says no woman. Because that's yeah. the one that's really sort of followed me around. Because now yeah. every time I buy something in a shop and try and pay for something at the till, it always goes to me, <laughs> computer says no. Or I get in a taxi and I say, can I have a receipt? They go, computer says no. <laughs> we need to get moving. We've got everything. Okay, yeah. Backpack. OK, we're going to... Oh. Where to now? Down. 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 Okay, it's getting a little steeper down this bit, so just watch your footing. Are we going down there? Don't want you going over the edge of that. Well, we need to find a way down this at some point, yeah. There's quite a drop there. <laughs> so how far down is that? It's a good 150 plus feet. Oh, 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 oh. So what, we're going down there yeah. with just that? With just this, yeah. OK, you pick a branch. Are you going first? I go first. We'll tie it together. I'll go first. I'll give so you where a... Do you, how do you want me to tie this? Round a strong branch. With what kind of knot? What do you think? Maybe a with... round turn and two half hitches? Why not? I can't remember how to well... do it. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is with knots, if you don't know knots, do lots. So just there keep... There we keep are. Coming. That's done. There we are. Maybe, there maybe... we are. There we yeah. are, Bear. <laughs> Maybe another turn on that Okay, one. okay. Is Actually, that... that's pretty good. That's pretty good. You know, I mean, it's maybe not the textbook one, but it's pretty good. That's not going to go anywhere. It just looks very dangerous. Okay, so that is quite vertical over there. What quite do do? vertical. Or just vertical. Vertical. Vertical, okay. Yeah. No need yeah. for the quite. Yeah. <laughs> So the terrain has been dropping steadily off, but it's just got steeper and steeper. We've reached this kind of end where it's about a 150-foot cliff straight down to the bottom of the valley. David's done his ninja knot. I've backed it up as well, and it's good to go. I actually feel sick now, because that is a really long way down. I know he doesn't want to kill me, but... I'm he knows it would make good television. So I don't entirely trust him. Um, yeah, I feel weird. I don't feel fear that often, but I feel it now. You'll end up like this. Right hand never comes off that. This one just for your balance. Nice wide stance and leaning back. And then that just always this, catches. This just this creates rope. friction. But and it always will go slowly, will it? No. 
Just adjust your... It's, it's fine. So it will adjust what? With just how much you... Just never let it run through totally. You'll be, you'll be fine. You'll be fine. It's one of those things that's easier to do it and experience it than necessarily... Than explain it. Oh, all right. OK. <laughs> Whoa, it's got a long way down. You're going to love it. Have fun. Yeah. Bye. I always get a little nervous just leaving a guest on their own. Have fun. Yeah, fun, yeah. But it's the best way of doing this because it means I can keep a hand on the rope at the bottom. If, God forbid, he did let go, I can pull that rope tight and stop and go. And go. Oh, my goodness, man. But it's that scary bit being left on your own at the top and he's definitely got some nerves going on but hey that's all part of the journey okay here we go i mean it was a clip on something here and then hold on with one hand don't let go i can't see what he's doing because if you go too far to the edge you're going to fall off it's going to be a lot of upset children who are not going to get any more children's books if you kill me what are they going to do on brent's got time OK, David, clip yourself in. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Has anyone died making this show? Please stop talking to me because I want to just concentrate on doing this. I'm going to look down. Oh my god. Oh jeez. Keep your hand on that rope, David. That's your lifeline. Lunch. Epic. New, 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 new. David judges my wilderness cuisine. Just turned vegan just a second ago, so can't eat it because I'm vegan. And reveals his struggles away from the spotlight. Depression sort of colours everything. None of it feels worthwhile. to see if David Williams can see the funny side of a 200-foot rappel. Oh, jeez. Keep your hand on that rope. an awful long time up there <gasps> only downside of going first you know it's a safer way of operating but there's no one up there then to help him through those nerves that he's got a face on his own but we need to get moving temperatures dropping and this guy is looking ever darker and we've still got a lot of ground to cover <sighs> keep leaning out you'll find it easier Try and get your feet up and lean out. That's it, get your feet up, there you go. Well done, nice wide stance, really good. The more you lean back, the more grip you'll get. Great job. We'll get Simon Cowell doing this. Cliffhanger, eat your heart out, look at you. You know, that is difficult, slippy terrain. 
God, good for you. Good for you. That was off the deep end. It's so slippery. Because you're on your own up there, do you know what I mean? There's no one, no one help you through that one. It's just so slippery, you just don't know what's coming. I wasn't quite as brave as I wanted to be. You were. What is brave? Being scared first and doing it. it tearful at one point. Hey, all part of it. Good for but you. But I didn't give up. You never give up. It was scary, really scary. It's weird because when you're standing up there, you can't actually see over. So I couldn't really see what was coming. But I didn't die. But I've got a horrible feeling worse is to come. This way. It's kind of quite muddy that way. Nothing like keeping moving, keeping warm. So I found this place yesterday where I knew if it was bad weather we could get in out of the rain and get a little shelter, make a fire, warm up again. What is this place? It's an old kiln. So they had all the lime quarries, you know, round about, and then they'd bring the lime here, they'd put it in the kiln, purify it, and then they'd use it for all the agriculture. So you'd have, so many hundreds of years ago, people round here, warming their hands, cups of tea, kiln blasting out, quarry work going on in all these places. It's pretty cool, isn't it? What snacks have you brought? Do you want to collect lunch? I was going to leave it here, but I thought the animals of fox would come and take it. So I put lunch mm. up there. See that little window? Yeah. You retrieve lunch. I'll get the firewood. OK. <laughs> OK, good. In the windowsill. In the windowsill. There will be a small yelp, I suspect, any minute. Oh. You got it? No, there must be some kind of mix-up because there's just a dead rat up here. <laughs> no, 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 I'm vegan. I've just turned vegan just a second ago. So can't eat it because I'm vegan. Lunch. Epic. That's it, keep going, it will go. There you go. There you go. We've got it. Good job. You ready for a bit of rat? No. So. Very careful without doing my finger. Careful, careful, gently, gently, gently. Pull the guts out then. So finger in there. <laughs> What do I do with them? Throw it over there. <laughs> Have you made a career out of this? Basically, basically yeah. Cut through the tail without cutting my finger off. It's going to be delicious. Here we go. Take the skewer and then insert straight into the anus. Everything's anus with you. <laughs> well, there you go. One rat. Delicious. We get cooking. I'm sure there's a garage near we could get some sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> you bring a lot of people a lot of joy. Stop it, you. Truth. Stop it. But for all of the highs, you've also had some lows in your life that you've been very honest about. Well, I, I have had struggles with depression in the past. Fortunately, there's a lot less stigma about people talking about that. And when did you first sort of notice it? I think probably in my, my teens. Depression sort of colours everything. So, you know, like, none of it feels worthwhile. And when has been the, the lowest times for you? There have been areas through my life when I've been very, very down, and it's been very, you know, it's long-lasting. So it's not just you had a sort of a bad week or something, you were having a bad, you know, year. So what triggered it for you? A variety of things. Um, you know, end of relationships, all kinds of things can take you to a very bleak place. I think it's quite self-perpetuating because once you're not sleeping and once you're not getting through the day in any kind of reasonable way, it just gets worse and worse and worse. Yeah, yeah. And I do think you feel so alone. It's like, you know, 4 a.m. You know, as much as your friends say, oh, call me any time of the night or day, it's just hard yeah. to think that anyone would welcome it. So I found those are the sort of bleakest times. And the fact that you got to a stage, though, where you try
tried to take your own life, that must be a, a horrific place to be. Yeah, but then the best thing is with anything like that is to seek help and not to feel ashamed of what you're feeling. Because, did you manage to do that? Yes, I did, and you know, and that that really, really helped. Men find it hard to talk about their feelings, so men are often quite resistant to uh, talking openly with their friends, admitting they feel like it's some kind of weakness to say that they feel yeah feel depressed. But the best thing is to seek help, and you know, some you well-meaning friends and family might say, "Oh, you'll be alright. Try and smile, or you know, whatever." Sometimes yeah. you need more than that, and you yeah. need someone who's, you know, who's an expert in this area to, to help you through it. I'm certainly in a lot better place now, and one great thing about becoming a parent, because I'm a father to a five-year-old boy, your whole life starts revolving around them. Yeah. And you do stop dwelling on your own yeah. problems so much because you don't have time to. I just don't really like being kind of alone with my thoughts for very long, which is why I think I probably am really drawn to writing. Because when you're writing, you, you, you're not alone, you know, you've got the characters, they're like, <laughs> sounds a bit tragic, but they're like, kind of like friends to you. Yeah, and it is quite an escape, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, it's just mm. the thing that makes me happy, you know, for, for somebody it might be gardening or whatever. Mm. For you it's lowering an overweight comedian to their death. <laughs> um, that's the kind of thing that, that you really enjoy. <laughs> Right, we better go. Um, I don't know, we're going to eat the rat no, now. No, it's no, good. No, no, it's no, no, good. No, 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 What part of the rat have we got to eat? The most tender part of the, the rat. The anus. <laughs> no, there you go, have a leg. It's actually pretty good. It's like all these things, if you char grill them enough, you know, it's like. That's absolutely delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Well done, you, hey? This mm. keep us warm, give us a bit of energy for the last push. Yeah. We've still got a few miles to do. Barbecue wrap! <laughs> Think it might be just better to just pack a sandwich next time? So I've warmed up a little bit, I've had some energy in. Uh, probably a first for David on the eating the rat front. But a lot of journey still to go still raining, still moving. Where to now? Along here, here we go. It's a bit slippery. Okay, so David, our extraction point is on the top of this old viaduct. So we've got to get up there. All right. And then get along, so come come to this bit, here we go. Okay, so look, I put this boarding ladder here, and we're gonna go straight up this. Yeah, I feel weird. Okay, perfect. Oh my goodness, man. It's just everything's been height. I don't like heights. Does this make me feel dizzy? It's just one of those things, isn't it? <sighs> Coming up... Come on, David. ...is our final challenge. I don't know if we can do this. A step too far for David. <sighs> mission with David Williams. Are they hard to climb these ladders? These are quite hard to climb. And it's about to get seriously tough. The key is doing this. One in front, toe, and then the next one, heel. Right, so toe one side and heel the other. And just take your time. And don't look down. It looks quite hard to do. Here we go, let's do it. I mean, he's dealing with it very well. That's his thing, isn't it? I'm sort of really competitive, so I want to be able to do it faster than him, but I think probably I'm not going to be able to. No, I haven't wanted to give up. 
because it will be captured on camera. <laughs> I'm not, I wouldn't look very good. OK, David. OK, whenever you're ready. You good? Good job. Okay, David. It's a scary, vulnerable, lonely place. But, you know, he's a man who's used to facing difficult moments. You just got to do that now. Well done, David. Looking so good, strong. It's called the face of endeavour. Good for you. It's really hard. Okay. It's challenging. What a great moment, you know what? Oh, that's hard work. Not like that. Oh. that is courage, that is commitment, and never give up spirit. Go and have a cream tea. <laughs> well, it's all we've got to do from here yeah. is to tuck under and go on the outside. So if you follow me on this bit, we're getting on to that. Check, check, check. Come and hold on to this one here. OK, here we go. We're leaning out. Slap them on. Come on, here we go. You can do this yourself now. I love it, look. I mean, this was a look of proper effort. We're covered in grime and mud. 120 foot down, clinging on together. This is why I love my job. Yeah, almost there. Uh. <laughs> Everything is so slippery. I oh, know. <sighs> he lulls you into full sense of security. I think it's all going to be nice fireside chats, but um, <laughs> really, truly dangerous things. I'm actually amazed he's allowed on television. So what's still on the? David Wallin's bucket list. Well, I, I want, first of all, to never see you again. <laughs> Obviously. Because I think even if I just saw you in passing, it would bring back bad memories. <laughs> but I've loved it. It's been great. But I am also relieved it's over. Were you ready to finish it <laughs> just up here? We've got more. Have you got I'm some other sort of... Have you got a nice surprise or a horrible surprise? Mm. Mm. Nice. <laughs> OK, here's our way out of here. to be something, isn't there? Do I get to drive this time? You're, you're in charge. You've let us out of here. The throttle is there, is it? Yes, good. Great job, David Rollins! This has been the worst holiday of all time, with the most dangerous tour guide of all time. But I've loved it. <laughs> this is just 
finding there's maybe a little bit more strength in me than I thought. I love it. David, it's been amazing. There were a few moments where I thought, I'm not sure actually you can even keep taking another step forward, but he never gave up and he almost got stronger as the journey went on. And that's a great mark of a champion. When it gets difficult, they dig deep. We did it! We did it! Yes! Nice one, David. Well, best to buckle up this week. We're in for a bumpy ride. It's the last in the series of Inside the Cockpit with EasyJet Thursday night at 9. And tomorrow night, concluding our landmark documentary series, Planet Child is at 9.